Hello everyone, it's Nikki Gordon Bloomfield here from Transport Evolved. I'm stuck in traffic here in Portland, Oregon. Well, on the west side of Portland, Oregon. We're on our way to hydrotherapy, aren't we, buddy? Uh, to get Pepper his weekly hydrotherapy. Fingers crossed this will be the last week where we have to go every week. Um, he had an injury not too long ago that kind of pushed him into a week by week hydrotherapy schedule. But last week his veterinarian said that, fingers crossed, he'll go to two uh, two times a month as of this week, so fingers crossed. But anyway, I want to talk to you today about the news that broke late last night that Volkswagen has been given official EPA approval for a range of its 2017 e-Golf of 125 miles per charge, which puts it at one mile per charge further than the 2017 Hyundai Ioniq EV. And that puts us in a really interesting position in the electric car marketplace. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about that. But first, let's talk about the specs for this new Volkswagen e-Golf. Essentially, everything else is the same as the 2016 model year car. There are no major tweaks um, to the vehicle. The only tweaks it gets are the, a few styling differences, um, which are equivalent to the styling differences between other Volkswagen Golf models between the 2016 and 2017 model year. I think it might get a few tweaks to its infotainment system, but nothing kind of groundbreaking, nothing that's going to make you super excited um, that, unless you're a real car nerd. But underneath the car, the battery pack has got a 50% increase in capacity, which I think pushes it somewhere around 35 and a half kilowatt hours, which is pretty good. Um, and that is how Volkswagen's been able to increase the range from the 84 miles of its 2016 model year car to 125 miles for the 2017 model year car. Everything else remains the same. Um, and that increase in battery capacity is of course made possible by next generation battery technology that is more energy dense than the generation of batteries that we use in the 2016 model year car. Um, despite being able to store more energy, the actual physical dimensions of the battery pack remain unchanged. So the battery pack in the 2017 e-Golf will take the same space as the 2016 e-Golf in terms of, of capacity. But what's really interesting here is that it now means that there are two cars in the electric vehicle marketplace that are very similarly priced that offer very different takes on electric vehicles. Now, the first obviously is the Hyundai Ioniq, which is $29,500 before incentives and before any mandatory shipping and handling fees. So just over 30 grand once you tack those on. And then if you take the incentives off and you happen to live somewhere like California, you're talking into the low 20s, which is pretty good going. The Volkswagen e-Golf pricing for which has not been announced yet, um, I think is going to have to come in at a similar price, otherwise Volkswagen's gonna lose its shirt. But here's the thing, the outgoing 2016 Volkswagen e-Golf costs $28,995 before incentives, before mandatory shipping and handling fees, and that's for the entry-level SE model. And that's for the 84-mile Volkswagen e-Golf. So I think if Volkswagen wants to remain competitive, it's going to have to price the 2017 model year car essentially the same price as the 2016 model year car, otherwise no one's going to buy it and everyone's going to go with the Hyundai uh, Ioniq. So that's going to be a really interesting battle to watch. Pricing has not been announced yet, but I think Volkswagen's going to have its, its hand forced there. And the really interesting thing, of course, is that Volkswagen doesn't have a whole lot of spare cash right now because of Dieselgate. Now, it's been postulated that Hyundai is effectively underwriting the cost of the Ionic EV and pricing it competitively low to try and, and cement itself in the electric vehicle marketplace because the Hyundai Ionic EV is its first mass-produced electric car. Now, um, Volkswagen obviously has been making the e-Golf for a while and it makes these other um, models in Europe including the e-Up and uh, obviously the the, the plug-in hybrid variant of the Golf, the Golf GTE in certain markets as well. And 
And so you'd think that maybe Volkswagen would have a little bit more leverage when it comes to pricing, but I don't think it does. I think it's going to have to price that car as close to cost as possible, otherwise it's, it's just gonna, uh, it's gonna struggle even more. So what does this mean and which car should you get? Well, it's gonna depend on what your personal preferences are. Uh, a lot of people say to me, you know, why do you drive um, the Leaf? Why do you own a Nissan Leaf? Well, I do because I like Japanese cars. I like the feel of Japanese cars. Before we had the Leaf, we've we've had three Toyota Prius before, um, and obviously I own a Toyota Rav4 EV. So we like the feel of Japanese cars, and I prefer that to the feel of American cars. And for some people, the feeling that they get behind the wheel of the Hyundai Ioniq EV is just going to be. Uh, a more comfortable feel than perhaps um, they'll get from the Volkswagen e-Golf. If you are a fan of German engineering and German design, I am, I like Golfs, I used to own one, um, then the chances are you'd probably pick the Volkswagen. Um, I've driven previous model years of the e-Golf and I found it to be a very competent, comfortable car. Got some great technology, very no nonsense, very well built, lots of um, very easy to understand features. Um, the trunk space, the boot space is reasonably good. It's not quite as big as the Leaf, but you know, it's, it's, it's a good car. And I would be lying if I said to you that I hadn't considered buying an e-Golf. I have multiple times. Now, this 2017 Volkswagen e-Golf, the entry level model, I don't think will have CCS as standard, but the SEL, which is kind of the premium version of the 2017 Volkswagen e-Golf. That will come with uh, CCS combo quick charging as standard. Um, obviously, CCS quick charging will come on the Ionic EV as well. I'm not sure if that's a standard fit or not. So um, you may have to look that up after watching this video. But these two cars are really true competitors. Now, styling, again, is going to be down to personal preference. I think the Ionic EV is probably going to be slightly larger than the e-Golf. And I'll admit that with Volkswagen, there is probably some, some premium that you'll pay to be buying a Volkswagen. Um, it's just the way that the Golf brand is set up. Which one would I choose? Well, I haven't driven the Ionic, so I can't tell you for sure. Um, but I'm hoping at some point I can get both of these cars and do a side-by-side -side review because they both seem to be very much competitors if Volkswagen can actually price the e-Golf so that it matches the price of the Ionic EV. And if it does, then we could see a new round of price wars between these what I'm going to call mid-range electric cars. It's not the Chevrolet Bolt EV. I think the Chevrolet Bolt EV is going to win a huge number of customers. But as I said in the Ionic video the other day, at about seven, eight grand more for about twice the range, not everybody can afford to pay that extra money. And you know, eight grand is a lot of money. So if you take the tax rebate off the, what I'm predicting the price for the e-Golf and what we know the price for the Ionic EV is going to be, then that sits in a very comfortable um, price bracket for a lot of people. And, you know, as long as they make enough money to claim their tax rebate back, you're looking at being able to buy a highway capable 100 plus mile EV for about 20 to $25,000, which is still more expensive than a lot of people can afford, but it does put you in a really nice price point. So those are my thoughts on the Volkswagen e-Golf. There is a Tesla Model X. I'm gonna go and get this guy in a treadmill so we can work his muscles and hopefully uh, ensure that the arthritis does not win. I'll be back tomorrow with a TEN Transport Evolved News Roundup show. I've got lots to talk about. But until then, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, support us at patreon.com, a link to which is at the end of this video, and keep evolving. Bye.